All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for me to sit in an S10 once again and floor it and hope for the best. Join us as we try to make some power and try not to explode into a fireball like most of Sloppy says we will because the turbos are next to the fuel cell. Anyway, let's get right into this. Okay, well, where do we start? This is my buddy, Mike Dino, also known as Dino Fab, also known as the guy that does all the aluminum welding and complex welding for me. In my videos, you have seen him weld wastegates to iron turbine housings without a problem. We don't have any problem with those either. And Michael has had a like 400 small block since high school in this S10. And as you can imagine, I have been harping on him for years about doing a Turbo LS. It has to be at least six years I've been on him strong about this. And I even, I gave him a motor for like well under cost at some point. I gave him injectors, decaps, uh, and I have pushed him quite a bit. And eventually he succumbed to all of this mental pushing. <laughs> And he put a 5.3 in, and there is not a lot of room in an S10, as you might have figured. So we were like, put the turbos in the bed. So he put the turbos in the bed. They are GT35s from Varen. I'd have to get the exact size from him or Varen. I'm not sure exactly what size with their billet GT35s, capable of quite a bit of power. So that fixes that problem. Air-to-air -air twin turbo intercooler and literally just decaps uh, flex fuel base tune from a PO1 from my Colorado, very simple stuff. Realistically, he was only looking at a 500 horsepower goal and I'm like, well, you can have flex fuel and make about 550 with these size injectors. So that's good for now to kill yourself with a 2600 pound S10. So let's just go from there. He recently had a kid, slowed some things down. We got it on the dyno. And we were able to floor it on Sunday, so here we go. All right, the rest of it is, as you know, 5.3, D-caps, sloppy stage two, pack 1218s, TH400, PTC 9.5, and, and a Ford 9-inch rear end that has been in since high school. That's really all there is to it. It's pretty simple.
All right, at this point, we're doing great. We're at like 78% injector. We're making 515 horsepower on only 10 pounds of boost. This car is extremely quiet, you might be thinking, because it actually has tailpipes, mufflers, and everything. I, I was surprised at how quiet it was too for making 525. Again, the astute of you might notice that there's a little bit of tranny fluid on the floor. And that's fairly common in a lot of my stuff. Uh, I guess the camera doesn't pick it up most of the time where I have it, but people overfill them a bit. And also the first couple times you swing them to 6,500, 7,000, they spit a little bit out of the vent, as you might imagine, just like the overflow system if it doesn't have some sort of surge recovery system. It's mechanical and uh, it hardly sees that kind of abuse until they bring it to the dyno. Anyway, this is a super unexciting dyno pull and it makes 603 horsepower on only 14 pounds of boost. Incredible. Hey, you can keep doing the 8 mile shut off. have one dyno pull from Mike's 400 inch motor and it made 356 to the tire and then if we look at here is one from the turbo 53 uh, it's obviously it makes more power I mean I don't know what else you guys were expecting but the nice thing is the drivability the flex fuel and some other things all the dyno runs were done at about e55 ethanol uh, and he is injector limited with the stock truck decap. So for now, like we had mentioned, it's a snowball effect at this point. The 550 tire is plenty to get him in trouble, plenty to get him kicked out at the track. He can decide what he wants to do in the long run, put a giant injector and fuel pumps on it and push the turbos till they stop kind of thing. Whatever, it's up to him. So that's where we are at this point. Figured you guys would like to look at all of the incrementals, and that's really all there is to it. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you have a nice day. Bye.